Hi, this is Steve Lee with Universal Devices. I'm the Director of Technical Services, and this video is going to be a short video on port forwarding. Now, you'll have the ability to review it multiple times. I'm going to go through it relatively quick to keep the video short, but it'll have all the content that you need to do port forwarding for most routers, or at least give you the idea of how that process is done. Let's go ahead and get started. Okay, we're now in the admin console of the ISY. We've clicked on Configuration and we're in the System tab underneath that. This gives us access to our network settings. By default, the ISY is set to Automatic DHCP. What that means is the router automatically goes out and gives it an address. And it's going to have an HTTP port of 80 and an HTTPS port of 443. For port forwarding, we're going to use 443. In the event that you have something else that is on 443, maybe you have a DVR or some other system that's utilizing it, you actually can uncheck the DHCP box. You could change the number to something else, in this case 9. Uh, maybe if you had a conflict of something and you, were, you wanted to uh, set your other address to something other than 80, you could change the number to even 30,000. Then you would go back and hit Save. This is only done if you've got a conflict with another device on your router that is using the same port and you're trying to port forward, and we usually recommend doing HTTPS ports for port forwarding, and you would just change it by making it a different number. I usually use 9 ahead of whatever the port is that I'm trying to do if there's a conflict. Now, if you want to set a static IP, this video isn't on all the possibilities of setting a static IP, but I will give you just some generalities. What you do is you leave whatever the IP address is. In almost all cases, your subnet is going to be 255.255.255.0. Your gateway is going to be the IP address of your router. Most likely, it's going to be something like 192.168.0.1 or 1.1 or 1.254. If you have an Apple product, your gateway might be 10.0.1.1. But it's whatever your router's IP address is. Then for DNS, you can either use your router's IP address in most cases, or a lot of times using Google's DNS, which is 8.8.4.4 will also work in there. Now, why would you do this? If you're worried about your IP address changing in your router, um, changing the IP of the ISY, then you would set a static setting in here. We'll do other videos on things like setting a static setting in your ISY, uh, the pros and cons of doing that. So let's go ahead and move on. Okay, I've now logged into my router, and my router's address was 192.168.0.1. Now, the default login for a router uh, that's a Netgear is admin is the username and password is the password. Now, if you've changed it, then you're going to have to put in whatever your settings were. Some routers on the bottom of them will have the login information, so if your router is different, you might want to look that information up. So, purposes of this is to give you an idea of what you're going to see when you go into a lot of routers. If you're in a Linksys router, the section you're going to look for is Applications and Gaming. Um, this also is uh, Cisco, same, same company now. You go to Applications and Gaming and then you'll see an option for port forwarding. On a Netgear, you're going to go to Advanced, then you're going to click on Advanced Setup, and then you're going to go down to Port Forwarding. Now, what I'm going to do in this case is I'm going to create and add a service. Now, a lot of routers are going to be the same process. And so I'm just showing this as an example of what it takes to do port forwarding. It's not always the same in every case, but it, the, the, uh, the similarities are there. Now, you can choose based on a list here. If I know that in my case my ISY is 104, I can just select it by clicking on this. Or I could have typed in 104. I'm going to give it a name and I'm going to call it ISY. Now where it gives you an option, TCP or UDP or both, choose both, and then the port that you chose. Now the default port for uh, the secure port for the ISY is 443. 443. 443. Now I'm going to go ahead and hit apply. If I were to get an error message that said there's a conflict with that port, that's when you might want to change it to another port. Now it's what I was showing earlier where if you uncheck the DHCP box, it'll give you the option to change your port. So if, uh, let's say you had to change it to something else, you could make it 9. It, whatever you do here in the router, you want to make sure that your ISY matches. Then you'd go ahead and hit Apply. Now, I already have that port forward rule in here, 
So if I go into my ISY, I can go right here and we can look at it. Let's say if I want to make changes le later, I can go back and just say edit after highlighting it. And then let's go see what the settings are set to. All right, I've got ISY, I have TCP UDP, and in my case, I did change mine to 9443. So I have that set here, and there's my IP address. That's really all there is to port forwarding. Now I'm going to show you one other example, which is a website called portforward.com. And if you've got different types of routers that may not be shown in this video, I'll just give you an example of a resource that you can go to that'll give you some step-by-step -step on how to do port forwarding. Okay, this is a website called portforward.com. And by any means, this isn't a, uh, an advertisement for the website, but it is a resource that you can use. And in a lot of cases, when you click on things, it's trying to drive you to purchase something. But I'm going to show you how you get the information without having to purchase anything. So if you go to portforward.com, you're going to want to go to where it says, under Home, it'll say List of All Routers. All right. Now, in some cases, the first time you do it, you might get a pop-up. You can just X out of it. Also, in the script underneath here, you might see a thing that says, yeah, go set up the router, and you can click on that. doesn't always happen, but basically you're going to see this then. Let's say I want to go to a two-wire router. Okay, here's the example I was showing at. You just want to close out of it. Now, see where it says two-wire right up here? This is what you're going to want to click on. Now, these are for the applications, meaning, well, what is it I'm trying to pour forward? Well, I can go all the way down to Universal Devices right here. You can go ahead and pick 99i. It's going to be the same setup. And I'm going to come up with a web page that's going to give me the step-by-step -step for that particular router on how to do the port forwarding. So I have, let's say, a two-wire. Now, the reason why I want to show this is this is a completely different look at the way of doing port forwarding. And uh, there are some routers, usually cable companies like Comcast and stuff, they'll have this type of router. And what I wanted to point out was this right here. What you'll see is under where it says allows users through the firewall uh, to host applications, it says select computer and you'll have a list of all of the things that are connected on your network currently. You usually then will highlight one of those computers and let's say it says IS, it'll say like EMS ISY. You'll click on that and then wait. Then you're going to get this other option that'll pop up and say allow individual applications. And you're going to look at this drop down list. Now, these are all different types of gaming systems, but if you keep scrolling down under the H's, you're going to see an option that says HTTPS. That is the same thing as port 443. All you need to do is click add, that puts it over here in the hosted application section, and then you're going to save. So this will go, uh, go through the step-by-step. -step. It also shows you how to set up a custom application if you have to do something other than a defined port that you already know, like HTTPS, we know is 443. If you had to set up your own 9443, well, there's not going to be a predefined application here for that, and you'd have to go and set it up um, automatically or set it up through this edit application uh, process. But this will uh, give you the step-by-step -step for it. So I did want to show it to you as a reference. Take care.